In today's world of dynamic news stories and viral content sweeping social media faster than wildfire, fake news has been a tool used to spread misleading information. Whether it's in the form of a clickbait headline you see on Facebook or in the form of an email forwarded to you from your 86-year-old uncle with a subject line reading, forward, 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 communism is taking over America, fake news is a force to be reckoned with. And a dangerous one at that. Fake news has sometimes led to dangerous and extreme reactions from the masses. Now, I write fake news myself, but I don't consider myself part of the problem. Instead, I produce satire, which I consider to be the distant cousin of fake news, but make no mistake, they are vastly different. The full definition of satire is the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity and vices, particularly in the context of contemporary politics and other topical issues. However, I've come to know satire as simply a commentary on reality. Satire is one of the best weapons we have in the world today because it doesn't hold back and it doesn't have boundaries. Satire is also an accessible way to approach serious subjects. Humor is a great gateway in that regard. But most importantly, satire can be used as a weapon against fake news itself. Fake news is meant to spread lies, but satire can ignite debate. Fake news is meant to take advantage of your bias, but satire, especially good satire, can help you challenge your bias because, again, satire doesn't have those boundaries. It can hit you from every angle. Satire can help you understand why something is a problem in the first place and why you should care about it in the first place. Now, there's one thing that writing satire has taught me. It's that people will believe anything that conforms to what they already think. You hate Donald Trump or the Republican Party? Here's an article that bashes him and you're in love without reading past the headline. You hate the Democrats? Here's an article that slanders them and you share it without asking for full context. We're all guilty of doing stuff like that. Admit it, me too. But in my opinion, we have to be better. We have to go forward better than that because we live in a digital age where we have the knowledge of the world at our fingertips. Quite literally, right now, in your pockets, you have a phone that you can use to access near infinite amounts of information at any given time. There's no longer an excuse for us to be fully uninformed. At, that, at this point, it's just willful ignorance. We have to be better, and I think satire can help. Because the harsh reality, as we go into the future, is that as technology continues to advance, fake news is also going to advance and only going to get worse. Technology and fake news will work together to become more manipulative. I'm calling it now. That's the grim reality we have ahead of us. So it's up to us now to condition ourselves to not fall for its trap, to keep ourselves in check, to always get the facts when we read information. The Piedmont is no stranger to being taken for truth. I'm spoiled for choice at the amount of times I can say we've been quoted as real. And while that's hilarious when it happens, it's also an insult. It is an insult to actual journalists with integrity who are trying to do good work. It's a reminder that, again, we have to be better. Again, fake news is a problem, but satire can be part of the solution. The rest of the solution, though, lies on us to always get the facts when we read something we like, especially when we read something we like, to always do our homework when processing information and to not run with information without getting full context. That is how we can be better. Satire can help us be better in that regard by always challenging your bias and your vices. And that's how satire can help us defeat fake news as we go forward. Thank you.